Hello, my friends. Mark Levin here. It's a bad day to be named Schiller over there at National Cubic Radio. They're both gone, the president and whatever that other guy was. Number 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. Now, I'm all in favor of getting rid of NPR and the rest of it because I'm confident that if they have a money-making model, the private sector will fill the void. We're talking about $90 million. I wish our conservative friends would fight this hard over $105 billion that was laced throughout Obamacare, the Obamacare authorization bill. Do you understand, and I do now, how sleazy what they did actually was, what Obama and Reid and Pelosi did? They took an appro- excuse me, an authorizing bill and put appropriations language in it. Normally, it's a separate process, but they wanted to get this done before you, the American people, would have an opportunity to vote. In other words, they denied you, effectively, your right to vote on a major issue because they knew you would change your representation in Washington over this issue. That is how tawdry, how immoral, and how undemocratic these leftists are, and this president is. So they put $105 billion in this Obamacare bill that should have gone through the appropriations process and never did. They never told anyone. They never told you. They never told me. They never told us. The media, which was so busy reporting on the game, they didn't ask. They didn't go through the bill. They didn't look. $105 billion. And they changed the appropriation process not only by using this authorization, as an appropriation vehicle, but they also changed it by, in effect, saying that the only way the spending can stop is if Congress affirmatively defunds it. And because we know the president will use his veto pen, they're off to the races no matter what. And they really lucked out the left because of the Republican leadership in the House, which refuses to address this, absolutely refuses to address this. If I were a member of the House or the Senate, I would never vote to lift this debt ceiling. I had said a few months ago I would vote only if we could put in place a deal which would set forth massive cuts, which would put in place a system to ensure that from that day forward there would be structural change in our spending policies. I don't trust this president anymore. I don't trust the Democrats anymore. Under no conditions, zero, would I vote to lift the debt ceiling. Zero. This kind of truly immoral and unethical behavior, this kind of undemocratic conduct, is just beyond belief. They have violated our civil rights. They have violated our voting rights by instituting spending processes, by instituting a law that most Americans did not want, and they tried to immunize their conduct, their policy decisions, from the next election and from the next Congress. It's so loathsome, I'm I'm almost at a loss for words to describe it. Even the Congressional Budget Office, which was doing all these markups and all the rest at the request of the Democrats, it was not informed about the spending laced throughout this authorization bill. So when you see the President of the United States get up and speak, every time he gets up and he speaks, he's a liar. Same with Harry Reid, same with Nancy Pelosi, same with all of them. Now, it's almost comical to watch these so-called Senate moderates who are up for election in Missouri, in West Virginia, in Nebraska, to watch them complain about the president not taking the lead on controlling spending. Did Ben Nelson vote for Obamacare? Yes. Did he not vote for the $105 billion in initial uh, spending for it? Yes. Did Claire McCaskill vote for it? Yes, she did. And Manchin from West Virginia, did he vote? Against repealing Obamacare? Yes, he did. Now they want to claim they're concerned about deficits. How can anybody who votes for the most massive entitlement in human history complain about deficits? How can anyone who votes against repealing it complain about deficits? And what will the Republicans do about it? I mean, this ought to be legislative war. They ought to use every legislative, that is, parliamentary guerrilla tactic that they can think of to slow things down that this president wants to obstruct things that this president wants, to make them pay a price politically, legislatively, for what they have done, to drag them to the table on our terms. But I don't see it happening. 
I don't even see a stomach for this fight. Do you? No, I don't. Now, the Senate today rejected the House bill that would have cut about $61 billion. 44 voted for it, 56 voted against it. So we can't even get a majority vote to cut $61 billion out of a $3.6 trillion budget, which includes $1.65 trillion in deficit spending. So it's a rounding error. We can't even get a, vo- a positive vote for that. Every single Democrat voted against it. Jim DeMint, Rand Paul, and Mike Lee voted no also because they opposed it because it was so minimal. But every Democrat voted against it because they thought it cut too much. $61 billion out of $3.6 trillion. $61 billion out of a $1.65 trillion deficit this coming year was too much. I mean, you got to be kidding me. 10% of $3.6 trillion, $360 billion, right? 1%, $36 billion. So we're not even talking about 2% of the federal budget. May I ask you a question? Have you cut your spending by 2% over the last year? Have you cut back your expenses by 2% over the past year where you can? Yes, but you're having trouble doing it, aren't you? Not because of you, but because of the rising food prices, the rising energy prices, which is also being caused by your government. The president talks about shared sacrifice. They won't even cut 61 measly billion out of their 3.6 trillion. What about government sacrifice? Has the president laid off anybody? No. Has the president slashed anything other than NASA? No. Every Democrat decided that 61 billion out of 3.6 trillion was too much and they voted against it. Three Republicans voted against it out of principle and conscience saying it's not enough, including my next guest who will be here momentarily. Well, it's an honor to have my friend on. I like to call him my friend anyway. Senator Jim DeMint, how are you, sir? Well, I am your friend, Mark. It's great to be on your show. Well, it's my pleasure. Uh, you're so popular now, I can barely fit in my schedule here. Let me, let me just <laughs> mention this. You, I am very concerned, as I know you are, that now we're left negotiating between $61 billion and $4.7 billion, or whatever the phony number is the Democrats have come up with. This is uh, about 2% or less of the budget this year. Yeah, the American people really are so far ahead. They're looking at this, and they just can't believe it. I can't believe how, how ridiculous this is. Well, even the $61 billion is is what we borrowed in one week this past February. Uh, and it's it's we've been discussing and obviously debating about that uh, in the Republican conference, just showing the charts of um, over a trillion and a half dollars in debt this year, and um, we've kind of lowered our expectations. But um, a, a few of us, as you know, are trying to pull the, the Republicans um, back in a direction that I, I think the country expects us to go. And I really do believe the November elections were about us being bold and taking chances if we have to, to in order to figure out how to balance our budget. You know, and, and we allow the left to define these issues, and I think it makes a lot of Republicans nervous. Like, they don't want to see a uh, national park shut down for a month. I, I've heard one of them say that. You know, I, I don't want to see the pictures of a national park shut down. I'm thinking to myself, well, then call it wilderness area, because you're not allowed to go into wilderness area, and the libs love wilderness, so just call it wilderness for a month. What, I mean, <laughs> it, it just, we're, the society is going to collapse and uh, there you have Harry Reid on the Senate floor talking about cowboy poetry. I didn't even know there was cowboy poetry. But there's a whole festival in Nevada that apparently taxpayers have been funding. Uh, and, um, uh, I, you know, I was happy to tell him that I love cowboys, I like poetry, but uh, the taxpayers should not be paying for this when we're $14 trillion in debt. And it's the same with public uh, broadcasting, as, as you know. Um, uh, we don't need to spend hundreds of millions of dollars funding something that is actually better off financially than the federal government. Uh, we've got to make these easy decisions if we're going to get to the hard ones. Um, so um, uh, we, we just need to keep up the noise level. The energy that got so many Republicans elected in November, we've got to keep it that, that those uh, flames <laughs> fanned. Mark, and I appreciate what you do every night because people need to know that um, the part of the process up here, part of the culture of spending is just lowering your expectations about what you can do. And I think we really have to be bold. Um, 
but fortunately, we do have some bold people in the Senate now, and I think I'm thankful we have leaders like Rand Paul and Mike Lee, and uh, um, they're really trying to change the tone of things. So it's a little easier for me this year than last year. Mm -hmm. By the way. You kind of blew it for me. I said, I'll put an investment group together. We'll buy Sesame Street so Barbara Boxer doesn't have to worry about Elmo not having a home. And uh, then you reveal that it makes over $200 million a year. I wish you hadn't done that. <laughs> kind of pushed the stock up. <laughs> kind of screwed me up here. No, but, but there's seriously. Some jobs, it, there's some jobs available over there. I heard there were some resignations today, so uh, you, you might be able to find a position. Yeah, well, you don't want to be called Schiller, apparently, over at NPR, because two of them are gone, two Schillers. Yeah. Um, but but here's the thing. If we explain this, Jim, as th this is a matter of saving the civil society, this is a matter of, uh, of, of you know, ra this is a massive opportunity that we have to right the ship, rather than sit there with their four billion items on their 50 billion pages of lists going over and over and over where this is going to be cut and this after they massively increase the budget for all these programs yeah well mark you mentioned the word that that i'm using a lot and that's opportunity i, I think we're going to find that it's not just about cutting it's it's about creating better choices for americans if you look at what the federal government's been doing, we haven't been doing it well, whether it's education, energy, transportation. And frankly, we don't have to do anything. We just have to let it go. We can save lots of money at the federal level, and actually the Americans will be better off in almost every area if we just turn things back over to individuals and the states. And that's what I think Republicans, conservatives, hopefully libertarians, independents, will all take into the next election that there are a lot of good freedom solutions that cost less that actually give people better choices. You know, but it must be very frustrating for you, even in the Republican, I guess you call it a caucus, I don't know. But, um, you know, the late, great Milton Friedman, he made the point, I'm paraphrasing, and he asked, why is it nobler for politicians to make economic decisions rather than for individuals to make economic decisions? And it's a good question. Why is it nobler? for politicians to make decisions that I should be making. We've got to get back to this argument that we want individuals to be responsible for themselves and their own futures. And you know what? That's what makes this country so different than most other countries. It is. And the debate should be over, Mark, because we've tried it for the last uh, half a century, and it hasn't worked. No one's better off. We don't have better education. We don't have more energy. We don't have better roads and bridges because the federal government got involved. And, frankly, it's made it worse. Even poverty, it, we have more poor people after spending trillions of dollars, and in the process we've destroyed families. So the, the debate should be over. The federal government needs to protect our country. We have, have a strong defense. And beyond that, to create a good business environment so jobs can be created. Uh, but we cannot do these other things well, and we can't afford it anymore. So it, it's time to make some bold decisions. But the, these are not sacrificial decisions as far as I'm concerned. I think Americans are going to be better off almost immediately if we begin to devolve things out of Washington back into the hands of the American people. Right on. Well, Senator DeMint, thanks a lot for coming on. God bless you and keep it up. We're behind you, okay? All right. Thanks for the support. I uh, appreciate it, Mark, and we'll talk later. All right. Take care. Senator Jim DeMint, we'll be right back.